Communication is the glue that holds our societies together. We communicate through the written word, the spoken language, visual images, moving pictures, experiences, and many, many more methods of communication. Humans are always working to develop new ways and new methods to communicate with each other. It's a way of life. We've been doing it our entire history on Earth. Now, it can be difficult to understand the true importance of communication in our lives. Sure, you know, we talk all the time, we read all kinds of things, and social media, well, that's just another way to communicate. But in a further attempt to understand the importance of this, Let's remember that communication is often considered a basic human right. Nearly every modern government in the world includes this in some sort of written form or aspect of law. Here's Article 19 of the United Nations Universal Declaration on Human Rights. Everyone has the right to freedom of opinion and expression. This includes freedom to hold opinions without interference and to seek, receive, and impart information and ideas through any media and regardless of frontiers. Most Americans are familiar with the First Amendment to the Constitution of the United States of America, which reads, Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof or abridging the freedom of speech or of the press or the right of the people peaceably to assemble and to petition the government for a redress of grievances. Communication has also served a vital function and role in the course of our history, both modern and ancient. In the Bible, in the book of Genesis, God used a communication confusion to disperse peoples, and even populate the entire world. Listen to this verse from the book of Genesis. Come, let us go down there and confuse their languages so that they will not understand one another's speech. So from there, the Lord scattered them over the face of the whole earth, and they stopped building the city. That, of course, is from the Tower of Babel, from which every language on earth was born. Communication has won wars, caused wars, shaped our cultures, built history, altered history, and continues to shape life on Earth. The internet is one of the most recent communication innovations. The internet is a new way to communicate. The road that has led us to the internet is long and winding. And to properly understand the internet, we must travel this road. So our first stop on this road that leads us to the internet is just a few feet from the beginning of that road. And that is the development of real long range communication. Until the late 1700s, the range of communication was rather limited. In order to communicate beyond the boundaries of one's physical proximity, they had to travel. They had to travel long, laborious journeys over brutal landscapes. Often communication was extremely difficult in this kind of environment, and loved ones may never speak with their siblings, parents, ever again once they moved away. Later, postal systems and messengers were developed to carry our messages for us. They would make those journeys and communication became one step easier. However, these messages and postal systems often depended on the messengers riding horseback, and they were limited to a speed of roughly 10 kilometers an hour. Now, of course, both that man and that horse had to rest at least once a day, and depending on the length of their journey, possibly multiple days at a time. This system was slow, much faster than traveling yourself, but it was still slow, and this system survived for years, decades, and even across centuries. Slowly, many begin to dream of a long-range communication system that wouldn't even require a horse, but would be safer and faster than any known communication methods. A few of these long-range communication methods were developed by Native Americans and other indigenous peoples around the world. The most famous would be smoke signals. This method of communication was used by many people groups across the world, and it involved creating a set of symbols that could be represented using smoke. However, the smoke signals, they require both the source for the smoke and something to cover the smoke or control the smoke. These smoke signals often become cumbersome and difficult, and they can be seen for miles around. It's not real secure for a military use. So today, I've come to the French countryside to discuss one of the first long-range communication systems. See? Social distancing can't stop. Green screen, green screen. I'm in my apartment alone. 
funny, it's only a joke. Just imagine we're in the French countryside in the late 1700s. In the 1790s, an out of work French engineer by the name of Claude Chap developed, tested, and worked on implementing the first robust mechanical long range communication system ever developed anywhere in the world. On March 2nd, 1791, Claude demonstrated his communication system with his brothers, Perry, René, and Abraham. They sent this message. If you succeed, you will soon bask in glory. They sent this message over a distance of 14 kilometers in just nine minutes. Their system, which came to be known as the optical telegraph or the semaphone telegraph system, stretched visually with towers across the French landscape. Chap's system revolutionized the world of communication, placing many horses in the unemployment line. With the optical telegraph, messages could now reach speeds of up to 500 kilometers an hour. One of the system's first messages was sent from Lille, France to Paris, a distance of over 230 kilometers. The first signal in the message was sent in just under nine minutes, with the entire message being received in just 32 minutes. The same message, if it were transported via a horseback rider, would have taken days. The semaphore telegraph system was pretty simple, but it was a massive project and a massive undertaking. The French government built over 534 individual towers that dotted the French countryside. Each tower was located 10 to 15 kilometers from another, barely within eyesight using a telescope. On the top of each tower was a huge tall mast with a crossbeam and multiple arms that hung off the crossbeam. The cross beams and arms could be moved into different positions to mean different signs and signals. So when a message was being sent, it would originate from one tower, maybe a tower in Paris, where it was encoded to protect the meaning of that message. Then the message was communicated by way of those arms and cross beams that would be moved around and uh, maneuvered into those different symbols. The next tower in the line 10 to 15 kilometers away would see that tower and repeat the sign going to the next tower and on and on it went down the chain. At the end, one of the supervisors could decode the message and the message's meaning would be known. To keep the messages secure as they bounce from tower to tower, each operator wouldn't even know what the encryption was. They didn't read the message and they couldn't even decipher the encryption. Only the supervisors could do that. But the operators, they only repeated the signs and they were so well trained that they were incredibly fast and incredibly accurate, sending messages at blazing speed across the French country. From conception, the towers and method of communication was used for military purposes primarily. In 1794, the system was used to transfer news that a small town, Condé, was captured by the French military. They sent that message to Paris and Paris sent back a message of congratulations. Both of these messages were sent and received on the same day. At the time, this was unheard of. Even Napoleon understood the importance and impact of the semaphore immediately. The night he captured Paris in 1799, Napoleon used the optical telegraph system to send this message. Paris is quiet and the good citizens are content. And Napoleon even built a mobile tower with those mass arms and crossbars that he could transport on the battlefield, allowing him to be able to use the system to communicate with troops, governments, and individuals across the country, if need be, from the battlefield. France was so well skilled with the device, they even delayed deployment of the electrical telegraph system invented by Samuel Morris. However, France even used the codes that Claude had invented on the electrical telegraph for many, many years before finally adopting Morse code. But as robust as the optical telegraph was, it did have its flaws. Now, of course, the system only worked when the operators could see the next tower, the one behind or the one in front of them. The system could really only function on good days with great weather when the sun was out. And the security of those towers via the system was also at stake, especially when those towers were used on the battlefield. Those towers were high up and the enemy could fully see any signals that were being made, meaning that if the enemy was able to decode the messages, then any military advantage would be immediately lost. 
and the optical telegraph system was also incredibly cumbersome and very expensive. Every tower was literally built of stone. That's not something you can do overnight. As electrical telegraph lines stretched across France, the use of the optical telegraph began to decline. So now the military abandoned it, but they did allow it to be used for private industry and businesses. National lottery numbers and stock trading and commodity prices were communicated via the system. Today, only a few of those 534 towers remain. Most of them have fallen into disrepair and are being reclaimed by nature if they haven't been torn down yet. But a few are now tourist stops, where tourists can stop by, learn about the optical telegraph system, and be reminded of forgotten technology. Now today, with our modern eyes, we can often look at this system of towers and optical telegraph and see it as ancient and archaic. And while that may be partially true, it is an old system that would be incredibly outdated today. We need to remember that it was the first long range communication system ever invented in the world. Claude had developed a system and he invented devices, those towers, to use that system. Compared to the smoke signals and even the horseback riders, the optical telegraph was a quantum leap forward in the world of communication. The French government had expanded the system rapidly in just a matter of years, sending communication further and faster than ever was known at the time. Today, yes, our internet, it's an upgrade. We still send communication via lines, but now they're sent on electrical cables at blazing speeds. But we must never forget the importance of the technology that went before and enabled us to improve and improve and improve upon it. So we must remember that the inventor systems and devices that went before us gave us many, many of our modern inventions. The optical telegraph or the Summerfrown system was really one of the first long range, robust mechanical communication system ever invented, paving the way for the internet and all of the communication we now use. The optical telegraph was used for over 61 years before it was outdated by the electrical telegraph. And the optical telegraph is the 12th major milestone in the history of computing. There you have it, the optical telegraph. It's incredibly analog. What gets more analog than moving a bunch of sticks of wood around? But it worked. Guys, I wanna remind you today, as I close the video, that I am now a brand ambassador for Saved by Christ Apparels. I'm excited to be making this partnership with them. They have a lot of great t-shirts, sweatshirts, and accessories. Of course, we all know that wearing a t-shirt is no substitute for sharing Christ in the way he commanded by telling and discipling others. But their apparel can be used as an important tool, maybe to just help the conversation get started. So I'm excited to offer you an exclusive discount code. If you go to their website, savedbychristapparels.com, link down below, and use promo code RODES, R-H-O-D-E-S, you will automatically receive 15% off your entire order. That's 15% off for you, and I will also receive 15% of your order. That means if you shop SaveByChristApparels.com, you'll be sharing Christ and helping me to support the channel. As a reminder, if you haven't subscribed, please go ahead and do that. It's the big red button down at the bottom and hit the bell icon so that you will never miss another video. If you have subscribed, please consider sharing this video or maybe your favorite from my channel. So pick a video and share it on your own social media page. And speaking of social media, I am active every single day on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And I'm a writer on Medium. Every single one of my videos has a blog accompaniment. That's all available on my Medium publication, Tech is a Tool. Find that link down below. I also invite you to follow me on Medium. I might be writing some pieces that don't make it into a video. So if you wanna see everything I produced, you're gonna need to subscribe on YouTube, follow me on Medium. All right, guys, that is it for today. Next week, we are going to cover one of the most famous inventions in the history of computing. I can't wait to research it and learn more about it so I can tell you all about it. It's a very exciting part. See you then. Bye.